In Python, we've got true and false values, and they are used to make decisions. For example, is the user's age over 35? That could be a comparison that we evaluate to true or false. In Python, the keywords are true with a capital T and false with a capital F. Here I've created two variables, one of them called truthy, and that has a true value, and one called falsy, and that has a false value. But on their own, this is kind of pointless, because what can you use true for? There's, there's not much use for just something true. But when you've got a number, you can then say whether is over age, and type age greater than or equal to 18. So here we've got our first Boolean comparison. We've got uh, the variable, then we've got an equal sign, which means that this variable is going to be a name for this value here. And the value is age greater than or equal to 18. This here is a Boolean comparison, and it evaluates to true, because 20 is greater than or equal to 18. So doing this here is exactly the same as doing true. We can have is under age, which means age is less than 18. And here, this would be false, because age is 20, so 20 is not less than 18. This would be false. Do note that I'm not doing age less than or equal to 18, as when you are 18, you are allegedly over age in most countries, so this one has to be less than only. Finally, you can also check whether is 20, for example, and type age equal equal 20. Now, this can get a bit confusing because you now have three equal signs in one line. When you have a single equal sign, that is used for assignment. What it says is, this value here, we're going to give it this name. So, we will calculate the value first, and then put the name and give it to it. Two equal signs is not used for assignment, it is used for comparison. And what it means is exactly equal to. So what it's saying is, is the age variable exactly equal to 20? And the answer is yes, so this whole thing here actually evaluates to true. Other symbols that you can use are of course greater than on its own, and less than or equal to, like that. Let's create a simple program that will ask the user for a number, and then we will tell them whether it matches our magic number. So we will have our number, which is 5, and then we will ask the user for a number, like that, and then we will say my number equal to user number. So as long as they enter 5, this will be true, and if they enter anything else, then it is false. To make this a little bit better, you can create a new variable which has the value of whether it matches or not. And then you can use an f string to say you got it right matches. And then if we run this and we type 5, you say you got it right true. Later on in the course, we're going to learn how to say you got it right or you got it wrong. But at the moment, we really can't do that. We need something called an if statement in order to be able to do that. And we're going to learn about that in the next section. But for now, you have the ability to get information from the user and compare it to something that you already have. And then determine one thing or another, whether something is true or false. In the next video, we will learn more about working with Booleans and making our programs much more flexible. Or, let's start by asking the user for their age. Then we're going to determine whether the user has a age good enough to learn programming. So what we'll do is can learn programming, and we will say age is greater than zero. Here we have created a boolean comparison age greater than zero and we have given it the name can learn programming however sometimes users can be too old to learn programming so we can use the python keyword and and for example age less than 150 and what this does is it says 
if the age is greater than zero and the age is less than 150, then the whole thing is true. If the age is not greater than zero, then the whole thing is false. And if age is greater than 150, then the whole thing is false. So, if we enter our age here, then we will get you can learn programming true. By the way, let me say at this point, there is no limit to learning programming. You can learn programming at any age. And that's because programming is all about problem solving and it's not really all that much about learning syntax or working with uh, difficult tools or anything like that. All right, now that we've got and out of the way, we're going to learn more about it in just a moment. Let's ask the user again for their age. And now we will ask them whether they are usually retired. So we will have usually not working. And this will be if the age is less than 18, people are usually not working. Or if the age is greater than 65, people are usually not working because they're retired. So then we can print at age, you are usually not working. And then usually not working like that. So let's run this. And if we enter 34, then we will get at 34, you are usually not working, false. If we run it again and we type 10, at 10, you are usually not working, true. Although you are going to school, which is pretty complicated as well at times. Now, there is a small problem with this Boolean. Usually, you don't want to write Booleans as negatives because it can get quite confusing to read later on. So ideally, you would want to have usually working instead. If you have a Boolean like this, then it's easier to think about. Just the same way that in English, you know, double negatives can get quite confusing. In programming, working with negatives is an added strain on your brain that you want to avoid generally. So we can rewrite this to usually working. And what that means is that they have to be age greater than or equal to 18 or age less than or equal to 65. And that is when people are usually working. So if we run this, then we type 65, then at 65 usually working true. So uh, that's unfortunate, but that is how it goes these days. So how does it work internally? Here we've got another function called bool. This is similar to int and str in that it takes in the value and converts it to a Boolean. So what will we get if we turn 35 into a Boolean? Well, you get true. So what if you turn the string Rolf into a Boolean? Well, you get true as well. So what happens if you change these to zero and empty string? Now you get false. So in Python, there are some values that when converted into a boolean evaluate to true or false most values evaluate to true but things like 0 0, .0 0.0 empty string and things like that evaluate to false so here's how and and or work for real if you have true and false what and is doing is it's gonna look at the first value is it true and if the first value is true, then it's going to give you the second value. So we will say x equal true and false, and then print x. And what this is going to do is, again, look at the first value. It's true, so it gives you the second one. So if we print x, you get false. And this is very easy to double check with something that isn't true and false. So we'll do 35 and 0. And again, it's going to look at the first value, it's going to look and see if it's true. And if it is, then it's going to give you the second one. So you get zero. Remember, it knows that this is a true value, because if you pass it through bool, it evaluates to true. So, and the way it works is it gives you the first value if it is false. If the first value is true, then it gives you the second value. So if we put 0 first and 35 after, again, it gives you the first value, which is the 0. Or works in slightly the opposite way. Or will give you the first value if it is true. 
otherwise it will give you the second value. So if the first value is true, it will give you the first value, otherwise it will give you the second value. So here it gives you 35 because 35 is true. And if you do the other way around, zero is false, so it gives you the second value. Again, 35. You can use this in quite a lot of places, actually. For example, imagine you've got a name and a surname. And it just so happens that the user hasn't given you their name. So you can do something like greeting, could be, name, or Mr. Surname. Assuming that you know that the person is going to be a man, of course. So you can then run this and you get Mr. Smith. Why? Because name is an empty string, which means it is false or it is false C when you pass it through bool. So instead of giving you the first value, the or gives you the second value. This is even better if you add in user input. Let's run this again. And now I'm going to not give them my name because I care deeply about my privacy. So I don't want to give them my name, but I will give them my surname. And then it prints out Mr. Salvatierra there. So situations like this one, which may seem useless to you at the moment, are actually all over programming. So knowing how AND and OR work internally can be really useful. So again, to recap, and gives you the first value if it is false. And otherwise it gives you the second one. And or gives you the first value if it is true. Otherwise it gives you the second one. Finally, you've also got uh, not. And that essentially does the opposite. So not false is going to be true. And not true is going to be false. So this is how the not keyword operates. It goes in front of a Boolean and it does the opposite of whatever that Boolean is. So for example, not bool of 35 will give you false because bool 35 is true. So not true is false. If you do not of 35, you also get false because Python realizes that not is something that you use with a Boolean. So it turns the 35 into a boolean before applying not. I appreciate that this video has been a little bit confusing. Do bear with me as we go into more advanced programming territory. And if you have any questions, ask them away in the course Q&A. We're always there to help. Thanks for joining me. Or